Air pollution is a very complicated subject, but we need to understand it fully if we're to have efficient and effective control mechanisms. People often see air pollution as being an environmental issue, but it's not. It's a public health issue. The air pollution directly affects our health. And it's not just our lungs. It's not just people with breathing difficulties. Air pollution is now thought to affect our heart and cause heart attacks. It can also get into our brain, throughout our bloodstream, and have all sorts of surprising medical impacts that we're only just discovering. So the impacts of air pollution are really quite broad, right through from birth to old age. There is strong evidence that the development of a child's lung is restricted by air pollution. And that's something that even if they move to an area that's much cleaner, their lungs will still be smaller than they would do if they'd grown up in a cleaner environment. And this is something that the public have to realise. It's not just an environmental in initiative, it's something that affects everyone's daily lives. London has been struggling with air pollution issues for over 60 years now and developing countries have a lot to learn from this process. We've tried a number of different solutions, some of them more successful than others. Fifty years ago, a lot of our electricity and industry was actually situated inside the city, and we relocated that away from where the people live, and this had a great benefit. Nowadays, the problem is more to do with vehicles and cars and HGVs producing the pollution. The public has had a big part to play in the increase in the interest of air pollution in recent years. This is very important because the politicians have to see that the public want change. They want to improve their health in a better environment. We produce a pollution forecast for the public to see what the air quality is going to be like tomorrow and the day after. The forecast depends on the weather forecast. So if the weather forecast is wrong, the air pollution forecast is wrong. But generally speaking, we can predict what air quality is going to be like about five days in advance. This allows the public to make their own decisions whether they should change their behaviour, whether they should go out for a jog, whether it should be school sports days, whether they should take public transport and so on. There are three things that affect air quality in a city like Beijing. The first is emissions from industry a long way outside the city. The second is emissions from vehicles and other sources within the city. And the third is the weather. There's not much you can do about the weather, but the other two things, there are th actions you can take. Air pollution of certain types can travel very great distances. So industry has to be moved a very long way from the urban centres, much further than you might think. You also need to clean up those industrial emissions and change the kind of fuel that's being burnt. One of the things that led to the greatest improvement in air quality in London was not only moving the industry away from the urban centre, but also a shift from coal to gas generation. In the city itself, the vehicles, the fuel the vehicles burn is important. So you need good quality, clean fuel. But best of all, you need to try and move away from combustion, from petrol and particularly diesel, into cleaner, more sustainable solutions. But ultimately, you also need to reduce the number of vehicles on the road. So public transport is important. The way you build your city, the, the access to these various parts of the city are very important. Where you live in relation to where you work what access you have to different choices and forms of public transport. All of these things are very important. So you have to think about how a city is planned, how the population live there, and how the population want to live. Again, the public is very important in this. They need to see that in order to improve air quality, some of it comes from themselves, their own choices, but also the pressure they put on politicians and the people in charge to change these things.